بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته and welcome back to our تفسير class we are doing the كتاب known as تفسير القرطبي أو في ما من القرطبي رحمه الله last time for some reason the class had run out of time with zoom so there was this last piece left before we completed surah al-infitar and the audio just cut out so we are going to complete the surah and then move on into surah al-mutaffifin insha'allah ta'ala so let's continue it says وَقِيلَ بِمَعْنَى إِنَّ هَذِهِ الْأَشْيَاءَ تَكُونُ يَوْمًا أو على معنى يُدَانُونَ يَوْمًا يَوْمًا لأن الدين يدل عليه أو بإضمار أذكر Uzkur yawma, in other words. And if you go back up here, the ayah that we are referring to is Yaslawnaha yawma deen, yawma la tamliku yawma, yawma, that's the two yawma who are being referred to over here. <coughs> so, in other words, all of these things will take place on one day because yawma deen is that day that we are referring to yawma la tamliku nafsu li nafsin shay'a. On that day when no person will be able to own and help and be able to do anything to, for another person on that day, except those who are, who are able to do so with the permission of Allah. But in any case, so we're reading the final ayah of the surah, وَالْأَمْرُ يَوْمَ إِذٍ لِلَّهِ And the, the affair, the matter, everything on that day, is, on that day of Qiyamah, belongs to Allah and Allah alone. So it says, لَا يُنَازِعُهُ فِي أَحَدٌ No one can argue, no one has a say in anything with Allah on that day. That if Allah decrees this, then that's what it is. Nobody else can come and say, you know, but but I feel this or I feel that. No, on that day, nobody speaks besides Allah. No, you know, uh, you, there's this khutbah which says, every malaki muqarrabin wa nabiyyin mursal, every nabi which has been sent and every angel in the heavens, no one on that day will be able to utter a word, but that which Allah has given permission for them to be, to be able to say it. So nobody, let, and literally no one, will be able to change, benefit, harm, nothing. Allah alone is the uh, one who is in control. Always, but specifically on that day, Allah has made it such that, yeah, in this world, I can speak what I'm speaking. You can speak right now. The next person can jump up and say anything. But on that day, nobody... No ant or creature or anything will utter a sound or move or anything. Nobody will benefit. Yeah, I can come and give you something. You can take something away from me. So we can do benefit and harm seemingly in this world. But on that day, no one can do anything besides uh, Allah. So he says, كَمَا قَالَ لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمُ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ الْيَوْمَ تُجْزَى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ لَا ظُلْمَ الْيَوْمُ تَمَّتِ السُورَةُ وَالْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ So he ends of the, the surah, he says, this ayah, وَالْأَمْرُ يَوْمَ إِذِي لِلَّهِ is similar to the ayah in surah Ghafir, where in Allah says, لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ الْيَوْمُ To whom does the ownership of that day belong? And Allah answers that, Allah poses the question, and Allah answers the question. And Allah says, لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ The ownership of that day, the all might, all power, everything belongs to Allah, الْوَاحِدِ uh, الْقَهَارِ The one, the all supreme, the all powerful, it belongs to Allah and Allah alone. And then Allah goes further, الْيَوْمَ تُجِزَى كُلُّ نَفْسٍ بِمَا كَسَبَتْ On that day, every soul will be rewarded according to what it had earned. Or at least I should say, will get a recompense. Will be compensated according to what they had earned. So if you had done good, 
good will be given to you. And if you had done bad, then what you have, get the of badness of punishment will be the, uh, the, you know, it's the, you are reaping what you sowed. La dhulma liyom. There will be no oppression, no transgression on that day. So if you get punished, it is because you had earned it and Allah had not wronged you in any way or form. And he says, and with this, the surah has been completed. Walhamdulillah. Let us move on now into our next surah. It says Surah al -Mutafifin. Now, Surah al I'm not going to translate the word Mutafifin. I'm going to really leave it for the tafsir so you can actually see what exactly is being referred to by this. So this is Makiyatun fi qawli ibn Mas'ud wa al-Dahaq wa madaniyatun fi qawli al-Hasan wa ikrima wa muqatil. Qal muqatil wa hiya awwalu suratin nuzilat bil madinati. Wa qal ibn Abbas wa qatala madaniyatun illa thamani ayati min qawlihi inna alladhina ajramu ila akhiriha makiyun. قال الكلبي وجابر بن زيد نزلت بين مكة والمدينة وهي ست وثلاثون آية Okay, so the first, before we begin the surah itself, he says there's two, three opinions at least over here. First opinion is that Imam Hadrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu anhu and Imam al-Dahaq rahimahullah, they said that Surah Al-Mutaffifin is a Makki surah. In other words, it was revealed in Makkah. And it's a Madani surah, a surah meaning it was revealed in Medina, according to Imam Hassan, Imam Ikrimah, and Imam Muqatil. Imam Muqatil said it was the very first surah to be revealed in Medina. Other Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma and Imam Qatada rahimahullah, they said that it is for the most part a Madani surah except for eight ayat of it. Uh, from the ayah in the ladina ajramu kanu min al ladina amanu yadhaku from that point onwards those are though until the end those were revealed in makkah the rest of the surah were, were revealed in marina now always to put one thing here uh, to clarify this surahs for the most part didn't come down all in one go short ones yes uh, the Mu'awadatayn, uh, Inna A'atayna Kal Kawthar, you know, certain ones like that were revealed all in one go. But generally, uh, a surah would be real, uh, revealed in piecemeal form, you know, little bit here, little bit there. And moreover than this, it didn't come like, for example, وَيْلُ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا اتَّالُوا عَلَى النَّاسِ يَسْتُفُونَ وَإِذَا كَالُهُمْ أَوْ وَزَنُوهُمْ يُخْسِرُونَ أَلَا يَظُنُّ أُولَائِكَ أَنَّهُمْ مَبْعُوثُونَ لِيَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ etc. It didn't necessarily come in that order. It may have come ayah number five first, then number three, then number two, then number four, like that. And as this ayat were revealed, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would tell the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, this ayah comes here. That one goes there, like that, because the as Allah had revealed it to Jibreel alayhi salam, Jibreel alayhi salam to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, hence why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam knew where its position should be. And that's how the Sahaba radiallahu anhum did this it in that manner. And that's how we have the Quran today like this. So that's why you can find that the ending of the surah could have been revealed early in Makkah and the beginning of the surah as we know it was revealed actually later on in Medina. So you have that viewpoint. And Imam Al-Kalbi and, and Jabir ibn Zayd, they said that it was revealed between Makkah and Medina. In other words, it was revealed partially in Makkah and partially in Medina. And this would be the more uh, middle of the road view because yeah, you can take, and okay, we're not getting into the whole the tafsir, not the tafsir, but the uh, Quranic sciences over here, at least, let me call it that, in the sense that you will find where Asbab al Nuzul are concerned. A, a, an ayah could have been revealed multiple times, and you find this. So, uh, one Sahabi say it was revealed in Makkah, and another one say no, it was revealed in Medina. In reality, it could have been revealed twice. Not that it's two different places in the Quran, but on two occasions, Allah revealed the same verse. So this Sahabi thought this is when it came down because he was there. And the other one felt this is when it came down because he was there. But in reality, it could have come down twice. So that's another uh, viewpoint with regards to things. But if you take a middle of the road viewpoint over here, you say, yes, the revelation began in Makkah. So Adrat Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu and Imam Dahak are correct. And it had come down in Medina as well. So Hadrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu and Imam Qatara are right as well. And uh, uh, it, because there were verses which were revealed in Medina, so Imam Hassan and Imam Ikrim and Imam Qatil, they are also correct because for the most part, there were a lot of verses that came down in Medina. So there's no, they also speaking from that angle. And uh, Imam Kalbi and Jabir ibn Zayd who said that it was between Makkah and Medina, like I say, 
Patia Pate. So all in all, the picture we gain from all of this is that some of the surah, some of the ayat were revealed in Mecca and others were revealed in Medina. And the surah comprises of 36 ayat. So let us begin. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. He's starting off now the new surah. He says, Qulu Ta'ala, Wailu Lil Mutafifin, Al Ladina, Ida Talu, Al and Nasiya Stofun, Wa Ida Kalu, whom Awas and Uhum Yoksirun. So he's going to do three ayat uh, in this beginning stage before he comes on to the tafsi, uh, before moving on uh, to the following ayat. So the reason why is because mutafifin is a word which you're not going to find elsewhere, hence why tafsir needs to go into it. So, waylulil mutafifin. Allah says, woe to the mutafifin. Mutafifin is a plural form. It refers to people who give less than what is actually due, if I were to broadly give a meaning for it. And now Allah explains, who are the mutafifin? Allah says, alladina, they are those. Iza ktalu ala nasi yastawfun. That when they take, you know, let's put it this way, you go to the shop to buy something. So you make certain they weigh out their 10 kg of potatoes, not 9.47. I want 10 kg of potatoes, make it 10 and a half kg too. You know, yes, tofu, they seek it, they take it in full. Give me the whole uh, amount that I want. But Allah goes further. But when they... When the boot is on the other foot, when the roads are reversed, and someone comes to buy from them, yukhsirun. Now, kalu uh, is referred to, you know, you are giving by measure or by weight. Wazan, you know, the weight. And kalu, uh, akila, it's from the point of measure. So by measure or by weight, if you cutting a meter, you like cut 900 uh, over there instead of uh, 900 centimeters, not going to take the whole meter over there, you know, uh, 900 centimeters or is it 90 centimeters? 90 centimeters, when am I saying 900 centimeters, but uh, 900 millimeters. But anyway, so when you are measuring out, you cut short. You know, uh, you come, to, you say, I want two kgs of meat, please. Uh, you know, uh, 20 rands chops and 40 rands cutlets and 100 rands statements. And then he comes and he throws like this here. And then it's like, keep a piece of fat on and some bone to add extra to the weight, that sort of thing. Yuxirun, they cause a loss. Now, what kind of loss is being referred to over here? It's general, so it would apply across the board. And I have a short audio uh, on WhatsApp, one of those normal weekly audios that I gave probably about two years ago on this topic of the Mutafifin. Uh, I must actually get it uh, uploaded onto the YouTube channel. But anyway, so it refers to a particular practice, and we find it even amongst the people today that everybody wants my right, my rights. What are my rights? And you find people, regardless, is it, uh, whether it's parent and child, whether it's husband and wife, whether it's employer and employee, there's always the people who's asking, what are my rights? Nobody asks the question, what are the rights of the people that are due upon me? You don't find the husband saying, what are the rights of my wife? Or the wife asking, what are the rights of my husband? And when you do find people who actually ask this question, they're asking it for the wrong reason. They're asking in the point that, do I have to do this for them? You know, that's the way that people today have become. You want that everybody must give you your rights, but you are not willing to give the rights of the next person. Even though, like I say, we'll come to the tafsir, which will put things in more perspective. So let's start. It says, Fi arba'u masail. In this three ayat over here, there are three, four masail, four uh, rulings, uh, issues that Imam al qurtubi rahimahullah, wants to comment on. <clears throat> okay, so he says, Al-Ula. Uh, First issue he wants to bring up. Rabban Nasa'iu Al Ibn Abbasin Radiallahu Anhuma Kala, Lama Kadim and Nabiu Salahu Ali Wasalama Al Madina, Kanu min Akhbathin Nasi Kilan, Fanzar Allahu Ta'ala, Wailulil Mutafifin, Fahsanul Kila, Bada Dali, Kola Farra, Fahum Man Ofana Min Ofan Nasi Kilan, Ila Yomim Hada. Imam al Nasai Rahimahullah, he reports a hadith from Hadrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu who said that when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa came to Medina, the people of Medina were of the worst type of people when it came to measurements. Uh, so, you know, it's like, like I was just explaining now uh, about you 
not exactly robbing, you know, robbing on the scales was something that Allah destroyed uh, the, one of the previous nations for. That's how serious it is. So the people of Medina, prior to uh, Islam, it was a common thing for them to be in this manner. You know, like uh, you want to buy, uh, uh, you have people. People have all sorts of stuff. You can buy a, a, a 500 gram butter and little did you know the person heated a knife and he scooped off a, a top layer of the butter and then he gives you, there's your butter. Even though he took off maybe like 50 grams of your butter. So you got 450 grams rather than uh, 500 grams. So he takes it from a couple of butters and he makes his own extra additional block. People do these sort of things. People throw out the potatoes and they throw it back inside the bag. And the bag is now 9.2 kg. And then it's a 10 kg bag. Things of that sort. People think nothing of it today. Ah, you understand. Ah, why, why are you complaining about a couple of potatoes? That's the way people think. But from a sharing perspective, it's a serious thing. Because if you were to have bought and you come home and you're like, hey, the bag don't look so full and you put it on the scale and you're like, 9.2, they robbed me. I must go there tomorrow and complain with the manager. Get that person to loot it. That's the way people tend to be. You want full, but you don't take the same care when doing it for other people. Anyway, so the people of Medina used to fall short in giving people their full measure when they used to buy. So Allah revealed the ayah, وَيْلُ لِلْمُطَفِفِينَ So looking at this narration here, Father Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhu, it uh, cements what he mentioned previously at the beginning of Surah Al-Mutafifin, where he said that the last ending ayat of the surah were revealed in Mecca, but the beginning parts were revealed in Medina. So in this sense that after seeing the, this is the way the people are doing business, uh, Allah has revealed down this ayah, وَيْلُ لِلْمُطَفِفِينَ that woe to those who now fall short in giving for their full measure. So, فَأَحْسَنُ الْكِيلَ بَعْدَ ذَلِكَ So, after the uh, revelation of this ayah, immediately the Sahaba, radiyallahu anhum, the people of Medina, they said, it was prior to Islam, so they didn't know any better. It was the norm, in interest, uh, drinking alcohol, many things were permitted, not permitted, but it was something which were being done. And Allah revealed uh, ayat of the Quran to remove all such practices. So after this ayah was revealed, the people of Medina, they fixed up all of these sort of things. So Imam al-Farrah said that the people of Medina are the ones who fulfill the rights of measurement it, uh, out like, you know, from that day, right up until this day, he was speaking in his time, but people still speak like that to, till today about the shopkeepers of Medina. So from that time that Allah revealed this ayah, immediately everybody, you know, they uh, completely gave in to the command of Allah and they incorporated it in their lives. And nobody looked back and it's like, hey, you know what? Uh, I'm losing out. I'm giving... 10.5 kg, I'm giving 11 kg. And you'll find this in the old days. I'm speaking now, uh, old days as in 50 years ago and so on. Uh, you found amongst Muslim places, you would go to maybe a Muslim butchery and you say, I want 100 rands meat, for example. And they would put 100 and then they would make it like 105 rand, for example. And to make certain that they give you the full amount and they'll add a little bit extra. To make certain that they never give you short They'll rather give you more because, you know, they put it on the scale. It's like, okay, it's 100. There you go. You hand 100 and over. There's no, uh, like in today's time where there's specially marked scales and everything. Your scale may be a little bit wonky. So you think it's weighing uh, 10 kg, but it's not entirely there. So it's giving you almost that amount. It's nine point something. So people used to do this in the old days. Nowadays, yes, alhamdulillah, you still actually find some people who do do this, but... Most people nowadays they say, hey, I got an electronic scale that works down to the uh, minute grams. So if it says one kg, it's one kg. And there's, they're not doing anything wrong. But obviously, if you added the extra but it's a sadaqa from your side. But anyway, so uh, that's from that point. Let's move on further. He says, وعن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما أيضا قال هي أول سورة نزلت نزلت على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ساعة 
نزل الم... ساعتان نزل المدينة وكان هذا فيهم كانوا إذا اشتروا استوفوا بكيل راجح فإذا باعوا بخسوا المكيال والميزان فلما نزلت هذه السورة انتهوا فهم أوفى الناس كي... كيلا إلى يومهم هذا هذا عبد الله بن عباس رضي الله عنه ما سيد the same thing is Imam Al-Farra later on to say what we think is Imam Al-Farra took it from Adal Abdullah ibn Abbas رضي الله عنه ما <coughs> So what did other Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu say? He said that this was the first surah revealed upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as soon as Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to Medina. So the very first ayah of the Quran, in other words, that was revealed in Medina uh, after أُذِنَ لِلَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَ بِأَنَّهُمْ ظُلِمُوا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى نَصْرِهِمْ لَقَدِيرٌ That ayah was revealed upon the incident of the uh, hijra, the permission being granted now to fight back against the uh, mushrikeen, all of that. But coming now into Medina, into daily life, and this was the practice of, as it is here, uh, uh, and this was the practice amongst them. When they would buy, it's like they would seek to get the full amount, uh, you know, if it's 10 kg, I want over even 10 kg, but they wanted the full amount. But But when they are selling, then they fall short in the weight and measurements. So when this surah was revealed, they stopped all of that practices immediately. And they started fulfilling the rights of uh, measurements and stuff completely until this very day, without falling short in it again. وقال قوم نزلت في رجل يعرف بأبي جهينة واسمه عمر كان له صاعان يأخذ يأخذ بأحدهما ويعطى بالآخر قاله أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه. Okay, another view point which comes from other Abu Huraira رضي الله عنه. He says that this ayah was was revealed with regards to a person who was known as Abu Juhayna. His real name was Amr. He used to have صاعان يأخذ بأحدهما ويعطى بالآخر. He used to have what is a صاع? You know, we understand today uh, a صاع when you talk in the books of fiqh, you know, one صاع of dates, one صاع of the... in reality, a صاع was like a bowl. Hence why you had the Sa'a of Medina, you had the Sa'a of Iraq, you had the Sa'a of Makkah. It was a bowl. And that is why you find the when it's changed by the fuqaha into, uh, let's put it this way, into mills and stuff like this here, there's a difference. You see this more in the context of a mud and a Sa'a was the two uh, means of measurements that people used to use. So they would take, it was like a bowl or a cup, and they would dish with it. And that would be a Sa'a. So the fuqaha, when they found, for, for example, there was, like I mentioned, Medina, Mecca, Sham, Iraq, etc. Everyone had a saw and a mud. Like we have today all a, uh, a gram and a pound and so on and so forth. So everybody had the saw and a mud. But the bowl in Sham was slightly different in size to the bowl in, uh, in uh, Mecca and different slightly to Medina. Hence why you'll find some fuqaha say a mud, specifically speaking, you know, from the context of wudu, making wudu with a mud, you know, and uh, you find Hanafi in Madhab say so much and Shafi in Madhab say so much and Maliki in Madhab say so much. Why? Because everybody was looking at the mood of their particular locality. Hence why it's like 500 and something mil year and 700 and something mil day and 900 mil day and so on and so forth. But anyway, so this person by the name of Abu Juhayna, he had two of these type of bowels. He used to take with one bowl and give with another bowl. In other words, you know that this one is 900 mil and that one is 700 mil. So when I come to you, it's like, I want a saw of uh, uh, dates, please. Okay, then I take my 900 mil bowl and I dish with it. And, you know, when you come and you say, I would like a saw of rice, please. I take my 500 mil bowl and I dish for you. And I'm so like, but it's a saw. In reality, you don't want to give people the same uh, full measure the way that you want. So it was with regards to him that this ayah was revealed. Now, like I said earlier, amongst some of us, they would say that maybe the ayah was revealed twice. One time with regards to him, one time with regards to the people of Medina. Or he was like one of the foremost people in Medina doing it. Or different, different viewpoints like this. But nonetheless, it was a track. Now, whether it was revealed regarding him or regarding the people of Medina or both of them or whatever, 
whatever the case may be, it was a practice and Allah revealed this ayah to put an end to it. That was the first point. Let's move on a little bit further. He says, Athania, what is the second point Imam al Qurtubi rahimahullah wants to bring up? He says, Qulu ta'ala, waylun, ay, shiddatu adabin fil akhira. Wa qala ibn Abbas, radiyallahu anhuma, innahu wadin fi jahannama yasilu fihi sadidu ahli nar. Fahuwa qulu ta'ala, waylun lil mutafifin, ay, alladhina yanqusuhuna makayilahum wa mawazinahum. The second point he, 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 Imam al Qurtubi wants to speak about is that the, the word wailun. For wailun, thumma wailun, thumma wail. What is wail? It means shidda tu adabin fil akhira. We translated it, or at least I should say I translated it earlier as woe, W O E. Find it in, uh, often in translations, people will use the word woe as well. Woe to you, evil creature. So, wailun, he says it means shidda tu adabin fil akhira, a severe punishment for a person in the year after. So, wailun lil mutaffifin. In other words, translating it according to this means there is a severe punishment in the year after for the people who give short measurement when you know when giving to other people they give short but they want to get the full measurement themselves when buying so that's one way of understanding what wailun is uh, according to hadrat abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu anhuma there is a valley in jahannam a valley in jahannam whose name is wail and in that uh, valley this you know, you can under, if you picture jahannam in your mind and the punishment that takes place in jahannam and the Sadid uh, refers to the past of the people of Jahannam, because obviously when you are being tortured and there's wounds and there's uh, bursting out and everything, all of that uh, horrible uh, things bursting for, uh, loose from people over there, all that uh, blood and pus and filth and everything, it falls and drips and leaks into this valley, which is known as whale. Uh, according to Hadrat Abdullah ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma. So he says that in other words, if you take this viewpoint, it says the people who are short in giving uh, uh, for people and wanting the full measurement when they are buying, they will go to that valley uh, filled with pus in Jahannam. That's what be there about. That's the other way of understanding this ayah. Regardless of which way you want to take it, in both cases, it is something which is serious. Like I say, Allah destroyed a nation for this uh, uh, issue. That's how serious it is. Okay, so yeah. That is the Aladin in Kusuna, those who fall short in the Makayil and Mawazin, Mikyala wal Mizan, same thing, which is weight and measure. Weight and measure. Waruya Anibni Umara Radiallahu Anu Makala al Mutafifu, a Rajalu Yestajiru al Kayala, Wahua Yalamu and Nahu Yahifu fi Kailihi, Fawizruhu Alehi. Okay, so. According to it narrated about Hadrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma. May they go now? Yeah. Uh, the, it reported from Hadrat Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma that a mutafif is the person yastajiru al kayala. So you hire a kayal. So whether you are hiring a scale or you are hiring a person to do the um, uh, dishing out for you, in other words. Now, you know that either the scale is not, you know, it's like I said earlier, you, you know the scale is wonky, then the sun is upon you. Or you know that this man, yeah, you know, he, he's one of those, uh, how you call them, those uh, sharpies, if, if you want to take that term. Uh, so, you know, he's... Uh, one of those uh, shady characters, let me use that term rather. So he's going to, he brings in money for the business. Now you turn on, you like, but I'm not doing it. It's him who's doing it. You know, the way people like to pass the buck. So you're like, I'm not the one who's involved. I'm not the one who's doing it. He's actually the one who's uh, measuring wrong for people. But the Sharia does not look it that way. You are the one who hired him knowing he's that way. Or if you come to know about it, you have to, reprimand him, fire him, whatever the case may be, but you have to take action against him. So if you know the scale is wonky or that the person who's working for you is doing things in a wrong manner, then the sun upon it, uh, of it is upon you. Obviously, the scale can't take a sun because it's a, an inanimate object. It depends on you to set it. But the 
person who, if you hire someone and you know he's a shady character, he gets sin for doing it that way and you get sin as well for uh, letting him do it under your watch. Saying, you know, I put him in charge. It's not my duty to uh, supervise him when you know that he's a, a charlatan crook who is stealing things. So he robs the people and maybe he robs you too on the side. Whatever the case may be, but at the end of the day, you share in the sin because you hired a person who you knew was a shady character. Okay, that's Zoom just letting us know that time is running out. Let's see. Okay, I'll read this last paragraph and then we can stop on this point. It says, وَقَالَ آخَرُونَ التَّطْفِيفُ فِي الْكَيْلِ وَالْوَزْنِ وَالْوُضُوءِ وَالصَّلَاةِ وَالْحَدِيثِ وَفِي الْمُوَطَّ قَالَ مَالِكْ رَحِمُهُ اللَّهُ وَيُقَالُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ وَفَاءٌ وَتَطْفِيفٌ وَرُوِيَ عَنْ سَالِمِ بْنِ أَبِي الْجَعَدِ قَالَ قَالَ سَلْمَان الصلاة مديان فمن أوفى أوفي له ومن ظفف فقد علمت ما قال الله عز وجل في ذلك ويل للمطففين okay so another viewpoint with regards to المطففين uh, uh, and the word التطفيف a مطفف is the one who does التطفيف and what is التطفيف he says تطفيف thus of falling short in weight and measure he says it's in regards to measure and weight and in wudu and in salah and in everything else in other words in your speech in everything literally it's a general word so it's not let uh, uh, restricted to only weight and measure so what exactly is being meant by this let's look at what is mentioned here shortly and you will understand things a little bit better so it says the Imam, it's mentioned in the Muwatta of Imam Malik, Rahimullah. Imam Malik said, Likulli shayin wafa'un wa tatfifun. Everything has wafa, which is to be fulfilled in its full manner, and tatfif, which is to be done in a short manner. So you give a person his full change or you give them short change. So that's one. It's reported from Imam Salim ibn Abi al-Ja'ad who said that uh, Qala Salman, whether the other Salman al-Farisi, radiyallahu anhu, or someone else, I do not know. He says, As-salatu mikyalun. Salah is like a scale. It's something which is weighed. Faman awfa, ufiya lahu. So, faman awfa, what is meant here? He who performs his salah properly and correctly the way it should be, ufiya lahu. Then he will be given his reward in full. Waman taffafa. And who he who falls short in this regard, فَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمْ Then you know what Allah has said in the Quran with regards to this, which is وَيْلُ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ In other words, summarizing what is being said here is that if you know that uh, uh, the, this is what uh, salah is required of you, now you come and you uh, jump and you chicken pick up, down, left, right, you know, boom, there you are, done, uh, over and done, uh, and you think, I've made salah. You haven't fulfilled the rights of Allah, but you are one thing that Allah must give you all the reward. You know, if Allah has promised the sun and the moon and, and the whole earth for a person who performs salah, you want all of that. But you are not willing to perform salah the way Allah wants you to perform salah. So this is a general understanding if you take the word in, in, in an unrestricted form. And we will take it in this manner. We say, This is a principle of tafsir, that we take lesson from the unrestricted nature of the words, not the specific reason for revelation. So... The ayah may have been revealed with regards to weight and measure, but we say because it's general, we will apply it across the board to all of these things. But yes, we will not say the punishment is associated with this as is with that. Allah has warned against uh, uh, falling short in weight and measure when you are buying and selling. And there are certain warnings as, as well with regards to making haphazard salah and so on and so forth and things of this nature. But you are not necessarily going to be thrown into Jahannam if you, uh, let's put it this way, fell a little bit short in, in certain regards. So your mind wasn't all that present in your salah. You were thinking about what's for supper. You were thinking about the business. You're thinking about your wife that you haven't seen. Things of the sort, there's other things on your mind. So you're falling short in your salah because obviously your mind is elsewhere. But you're not going to be thrown into Jahannam. Uh, into a, a, a valley filled with pus and you know things of that sort for this year so we say yes do everything properly don't fall short in anything but the actual thing that the prohibition and the condemnation and the punishment is associated with is with regards to buying and selling that you want the full thing when you buy from others 
but you look to cut people short as far as possible. And you think I, that makes me a shrewd businessman. You know, I know how to make money. No, you know, to rob people, but so be it. It's a commonplace in the, the world today. And people think you still, you know, that's the type of person you must get to work for you because he'll bring you in money. He may bring you in money, but it is money without a uh, reward in it. It is money without barakah. It is money which will be a snake that will bite you still in Jahannam. So it's a very serious thing when people think, uh, you know, I, I, I'm doing nothing. It, everybody does it. It's understood. The Sharia does not look at well, things of that sort, sort. If the Sharia said it's A, then it is A. Regardless of if the world stand on their heads and say B is also fine. The Sharia say the B goes in the bin. A is all that matters. So it is our duty to make certain that, you know, when we are doing things, and I'll even add on here, taking it again from the unrestricted nature, if you want to buy, uh, let's put it this way, you want to buy some goods, you want to be shown that this is something which is good, it's fixed, everything of the sort. But when you sell something, you'll cover up the defects. And you try and sell it off like that. Ah, what do they know? You know, it's a person not knowing that this is actually the sour uh, fruit over here. I'll sell them this uh, grapes and this things, which I know is not the best of things here. But hey, what do they know? They don't know any better. Yeah, they're not used to good quality. Give them this year. You think nothing of it. Allah knows the reality and you will be punished for that sort of thing. If you say, you know, these are the strawberries, unfortunately, I haven't tasted them all. Uh, I have tasted some and, you know, they're not exactly the sweetest thing, by all means. But you don't, you know, you're going to come inside and you want Woolies quality. You know, you want Woolworths uh, top quality. You must drink that water and start speaking with a white accent. But then you fill up water from the tap, which got like 400 uh, disease uh, germs and bacteria inside there. You put a cap on it and you sell it to people over there as if it is freshly bottled spring water. But anyway, long story short, any type of deception, any type where you are wanting the best, you are wanting that, like I say, you, you buy a car, that person didn't tell me there's this little cut here on the seat. You make an issue about it. But you sell a, a, a car where the engine is busy leaking oil and you say you throw in some uh, stop smoke over there and you're like, hey, the car's all good. Don't worry about it. You want one thing, you give another thing. You are from the mutafifin. So it's a very serious thing. May Allah protect us all from falling into that trap and being of that type of people. May Allah keep us on the path of goodness and righteousness so we do what is right and not what people are just doing and what you know everybody's doing it so it's all fine allah has given us the rules we follow the rules of allah not our own rules and our own things so may allah grant us understanding we'll stop on this point here for tonight inshallah ta'ala next week we can continue on from Atharitha, the third point regarding these first three ayat of Surah Al-Mutafifin. But that being said, we end on this point here for tonight, inshallah ta'ala. Until next time, we end and we say, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyina Muhammad, subhanallahi wa bihamdihi, subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik, nashid wa la ilaha illa anta, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk, wa alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.